Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This week I am doing another grocery budget challenge. I had said on a video or two ago that I was gonna start taking different price points and seeing how many meals I could make from that amount of money. And so I've done a $10, I've done, well I've actually done a $5 for one person, $5 challenge, $10, 20, 25. This week we're doing 30. So my goal in this series is just to take different price points, take that amount of money into the grocery store and see how many meals that I can make with that amount of money. Some of you have asked, why do I only do dinners? Why do I not just show breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks and see how many days we can go? And I have a good reason for that. At the point that my family is at right now, we are not all here eating breakfast at the same time. We are not all here eating lunch. We are all here eating dinners. So with different work schedules, both my daughters work, they have school, they have activities. My husband works. I'm gonna be going back to school soon. Our schedules are all over the place. So realistically, if I did a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I wouldn't be making it for my whole family. So I'd just be doing it for myself. So for my mind, I like to just see how many dinners I can get out of that price point because that's what's gonna feed my whole family. So this week I took $30. I had a loose plan. I think I'm gonna come up with five dinners and there are four of us, so at least 20 meals out of $30. But let me turn you around, show you what I got, and then let's get in the kitchen and start cooking. So here is all I got for $30. My total was $30.16. That is before tax. We do have sales tax on food here in North Carolina. Here's what I've got. So I see a big theme of pasta here. That wasn't I didn't think about that when I was planning the meals, but it's okay. It's gonna keep our bellies full. All right, so here's what I've got. I got two larger tomatoes that I'm gonna be using in a recipe, small onion. I got some bow tie pasta, shells and cheese. I got two nine inch pie crust, some wide egg noodles. I got a block of mozzarella and a block of cheddar. These eight ounce blocks are still going up in price. The last time I bought these, I wanna say they were $1.86 each. Today, they were $2 each. So, the cheese is going up. I don't know what that's about. I got two pounds of ground turkey. I am actually gonna be using this, I think, in three recipes. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, cut these into thirds and use like two thirds in one recipe, two thirds in one recipe, two thirds in another. That's a trick to stretch your meal a little bit. I got a can of diced tomatoes with onion, celery, and green pepper, a can of cream of mushroom, a can of evaporated milk, a can of sliced carrots, and two cans of chicken. I then got a bag of frozen corn, frozen peas. I think I already showed you the egg noodles. I got a jar of pasta sauce. I got the great value tomato basil garlic. I got a container of sour cream and a container of low fat cottage cheese. So I'm gonna try to take this and turn it into five dinners this week. And the total was $30.16. All right, so we are gonna take some of our ground turkey and some other various things that we got. And we're gonna be making something called a shipwrecked casserole. I got this idea from over at um, the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you have not seen the Hillbilly Kitchen, I'll leave a link down below to the video where she showed this. But when I saw it, I thought that looks very filling and it looks like something we could do on a budget. So I'm going to try out that recipe and I'm really excited about it. So I've thawed out one of my pounds of ground turkey. Remember, I'm going to only use two thirds of this because I'm trying to stretch out my meal. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of Think about thirds, I'm gonna just score this like this and this to kind of think of what two thirds would look like. And so I'm gonna be saving one third of this and I'll put it back in the fridge for another meal. So I have two thirds of that pound of ground turkey in my casserole skillet, let's get to the stove. The other ingredients that we're gonna be adding to that is a can of these tomatoes evaporated milk. We only need a cup and this is a little bit more than a cup. 
So I'll probably have a little bit of extra. We're gonna be using our mac and cheese. This is the shells and cheese, three cheese from Great Value. I'm also gonna be using some of the peas and some of the corn. Once I have browned my ground turkey and added salt and pepper, I'm gonna be adding in the mac and cheese. So I add in a little cheese powder pack. I add in my shells. Yes, I know, I don't have any liquid yet, but just hang on, it's coming. I add in one cup of the evaporated milk. I'm using this instead of milk because I did not have that in my budget to buy more milk than this. So I use evaporated milk. And so I'm just giving that a stir and then I'll be adding in the rest of the ingredients. Next, I'm going to be adding in this whole can of diced tomatoes. Do not drain any of the liquid. Remember, we are trying to cook the pasta in this dish as we are making it. So I'm gonna give that a stir and then I'm going to be making sure that all of those pasta shells are kind of nicely tucked down into that liquid. And then I'm going to be adding in a cup of my frozen corn and a cup of the frozen peas. I'm going to be saving the rest of my frozen corn and peas for another recipe. So now that I have all that kind of combined, I'm gonna put a lid on it. Yes, I know this lid does not match, but it's the only lid that fits my cast iron skillet. So while that is coming together, I am going to shred up half a block of the cheddar cheese. I'm then going to add about half of that into the mixture and give it a good stir. At this point, I am going to be cutting off the heat and removing it from the heat because I don't want anything to start sticking. And I did check the noodles and they were done. So now I'm gonna take the remainder of the cheese. I'm gonna sprinkle that on top. I'm gonna put the lid on and just let it sit for a few minutes and let that cheese melt. And this is a good trick without having to stick it in the oven. And so I just kind of let that sit for a few minutes and here is our finished bowls. This was very good. Definitely a budget dinner that is worth trying and you do get all the protein and the veggies. So definitely a win. All right, so we're gonna be making a chicken pot pie tonight. I'm gonna be using my canned chicken, some veggies and some pie crust. So let me get my filling mixed up and let's make a chicken pot pie. First thing I want to do for making my filling is take two of these um, five ounce cans of chicken. I'm going to put that into my bowl. I'm going to take my fork and just kind of mush that into smaller pieces. If you had chicken breast or rotisserie chicken, definitely use that. This is just a cheaper way when you are on a budget. I still have some of that frozen corn and those frozen peas. I'm going to be adding in a half a cup of each. And then I still have a little bit left that I'm gonna use for a side for another meal. So I'm gonna take what I have left and put in this container. I'm also gonna take half of this can of sliced carrots. I'm gonna drain it. I'm gonna take half of it and put it into my chicken pot pie and put the rest in my mixed veggies. So now I have this ready and I have my side of mixed veggies to go with another meal. Now this is my husband's recipe. I never made chicken pot pie like this until I met him. We add sour cream in. Now I'm not gonna add this whole container. This is a 16 ounce container. I'm gonna add a good half of it, give it a stir and then see how much we need. I think that looks pretty good. Salt, pepper. Give that another stir. And I think that looks good. You don't want your filling to be too liquidy or your pie's not going to 
be firm, like in a pie form. It's just gonna go everywhere. So let's get this in our pie dish. So I have a pie dish. You can do this in this form. You could do it in a square, however you wanna do it. It just depends on your preference and how you're making your crust. So I normally like to have a bottom layer pie crust too, but since I'm on a budget, I'm not. I'm gonna stretch these two pie crusts out for two meals. So I'm just gonna pour my mixture right here into my pie plate. So there I filled my pie plate. Gonna lay that on top like that. I'm gonna crinkle it around the edges. And then I'm gonna cut some slits so it can breathe. I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven until the top is golden brown. Here is the pie, chicken pot pie, out of the oven. I ended up turning it to 450, not 350, and baking it for about 10 to 12 minutes. And this is what it looks like coming out. It is bubbly and delicious. And we're gonna let this sit and cool for a few minutes and then we'll show you our plates. Here is our chicken pot pie in the bowl. You can see how the crust stayed together. We've got that ooey gooey feeling. This made four servings. We just cut that pie into fours. Definitely delicious. I knew it would be. This is a winner and on regular rotation in our house. Okay, so for tonight's dinner, we are going to take the bow tie pasta. I'm going to cook up two thirds of a pound of that ground turkey. We've got some pasta sauce, some cottage cheese. We're going to turn this into a lasagna skillet. I've watched several videos of lasagna skillets. I'm kind of taking all the different ideas I've got and turning them into my own recipe. So let's get our pasta dropped and our ground turkey in the skillet. So I did take a little bit of that onion that I bought and I diced that up. I'm going to be saving the onion for another recipe, but I did want to put a little bit in the pan with my two thirds a pound of ground turkey. So I've got my noodles going, I've got my meat finishing up here, and then I'm just going to be adding in that jar of pasta sauce. I also like to add in a scoop of that starchy pasta water into that jar and give it a shake and then add that to the pasta sauce as well. I'm going to be grating up half of my mozzarella cheese and then we're going to turn this into the lasagna skillet. So I'm going to take some cottage cheese and I'm going to be adding that as well. I'm not going to use this whole container. I'm only going to be using about half. I wished I could have found an eight ounce container of cottage cheese, but I could not find that. So that would definitely um, be better with your budget. But I did end up eating that cottage cheese later on in the week. So I added half of that container to my meat mixture and I just gave that a stir. Then I took part of the mozzarella cheese and I just stirred that in and that's going to give this such a cheesy flavor and texture. I then added in the bow tie pasta and then I'm going to give this a stir and this is going to be our lasagna skillet. So here you can see once I got that all stirred together I added the remainder of that mozzarella cheese on top just to let that melt. This was so delicious and so filling. Here you can see the lasagna skillet in my bowl. It was very delicious. This made a ton of food and my family really enjoyed it. So for this meal, we are going to make a tomato pie. This is a Southern dish, great way to use up fresh tomatoes and produce. I'm gonna be using some tomatoes, onions, cheese, I'm gonna use my other pie crust. So the first thing I need to do is preheat my oven to 350. Then I'm gonna get my pie crust into my pie plate here. Now for this pie, unlike the chicken pot pie, I'm actually gonna put the crust in the bottom. I have sprayed my pie dish here. And I'm just going to put this out. I need to bake my crust for just about eight minutes to get it started before I put my filling in. So I'm just gonna take my crust here. I'm going to put it down into my pie dish and I'm gonna kind of work that around into your pan. 
is you want to prick it with a fork because if not, it's going to bubble up. So I'm just going to take a fork and put some holes in it like this so that when I bake it, it doesn't puff up too much. All right, so I'm going to put this into a 350 degree oven for about eight minutes. Now to prep my tomatoes, I have washed them. You wanna make sure that they're pretty ripe. So these were greener when I bought them at the beginning of the week. You can see they've ripened nicely on my counter. So tomatoes hold a lot of liquid. So I'm going to be trying to draw some of the liquid out of my tomatoes. So while I'm waiting on my crust, I'm just gonna go ahead and slice my tomatoes up. And then I am going to lay them here onto a paper towel lined cookie sheet so I can have a place for that liquid to go. Not your tomato pie is gonna be a watery pie. So I'm just laying those out here on my cookie sheet. Now that I have all of my tomatoes on my paper towel line cookie sheet, I'm going to put some salt on them and that's gonna help draw out some of the liquid. So you just wanna sprinkle a little salt on top and this is just gonna hang out for a while and all that liquid that comes out is gonna soak into the paper towel. And plus this salt is gonna give this tomato tons and tons and tons of flavor. So I'm just gonna give this a slice and then I'm gonna dice. Slice and dice. The next prep that I need to do is I have half a block of cheddar, half a block of mozzarella left. I'm gonna shred that up. That's gonna be going in with the vegetables. Okay, now that I have all that cheese shredded, I put most of it here in this bowl, but I did save a little bit for the top. To make the sauce for this, you're gonna take your cheese and one cup of mayonnaise. I'm gonna give this a stir. And you're just combining the cheese with the mayonnaise. So, I've got that just mixed up. It looks just kind of like that. It's kind of like a pimento cheese texture. So now we're going to assemble our tomato pie. Our crust out of the oven. I'm gonna move this cheese for a minute. All right, our tomatoes, you can see all the liquid that's come out of it. This is the second paper towel I've put on. So I'm just gonna remove that. I'm sure there's many ways to make this pie. This is the way I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna start with a layer of tomatoes. Then I'm going to do some onions, spread those around. Then I'm going to salt and pepper. Now remember, I've already salted my tomatoes some, so I'm not using much at all. Some people only put the cheese mixture on the top. I'm gonna put some in the middle. Kinda get it spread around like that. This is already smelling amazing. Now I'm gonna put the rest of my tomatoes. Then I'm gonna put more onions. I'm probably not even gonna use this whole onion, y'all. I'll save that for something extra because I don't think it needs that much. Put the rest of the cheese mixture in with my remaining cheese. That'll kind of fill in these gaps here. And I'm gonna put it back in that 350 degree oven for about 30, 35 minutes. You check your cheese and when it looks done to you, it's probably done, but 30, 35 minutes should be good. And I still have this much onion I'm gonna put in my freezer for a recipe at a later date. Here is this beautiful tomato pie out of the oven after 30 minutes at 350 degrees. It smells amazing. And so I'm gonna let this kind of sit and hang out and cool for a little bit, then I'll show you our plates. And here is our tomato pie in my bowl. Uh, this looks amazing, it smells so good. And it's a great way to use up garden veggies and it's very budget friendly. Okay, so for tonight's meal, we're gonna use what's left of our ground turkey, which we have two thirds of a pound left. We're gonna use our egg noodles. We're gonna use some cream of mushroom. We're gonna use our mixed veggies. We're gonna make a beef stroganoff. So the first thing I need to do is get the ground turkey going in the skillet and drop my noodles. So my pasta is going. My ground turkey is cooked. I'm gonna hit it with some salt and pepper. And then we're going to add in the items to make the sauce. First, I'm gonna add in this can of cream of mushroom. If it was in my budget, I would love fresh mushrooms or even canned mushrooms, but that's not in my budget. 
So I'm gonna give this a stir and scrape up the bits off the bottom of the pan. Next, I have a little bit of that evaporated milk that was left from the shipwrecked casserole. I'm gonna add that in to thin out my sauce. And now that I have my sauce combined here, I stirred and scraped the bottom and got all the goodness off of there. So here's my creamy beef sauce and my noodles are going. I'm gonna get those mixed veggies in a pot for my side dish. Once the noodles are done, dump those into your sauce mix and give that a stir. And then you're gonna stir in what's left of your sour cream, which is about half of this container, into your noodle mixture. So I'm just giving that a stir. And that sour cream is gonna add that thickness. It's gonna help coat the noodles with the sauce. I mean, look at that. Mm. And I have my mixed veggies going. This is gonna be a delicious dinner. And look, I mean, that's like a whole pan full. A lot of food. Here is our plate, the beef stroganoff. It's amazing, I've already tasted it. And the mixed veggies. This is a filling meal and it's a great end to our $30 challenge. Okay, so that is gonna do it for our $30 challenge. I am sure that you could have taken this $30 and made a lot more meals if you did things like rice and beans and things like that, but those are all things that I've shown you before. So I wanted to show you something new, something different. I already told you at the beginning why I don't show breakfast and lunch. This is just what works out for my family. So this was five dinners for my family for $30. The shipwrecked casserole, that was great. You had your veggies, you had your pasta, and you had your protein. It made a good four to six servings. It depends on how much your family eats. For my family, it made six servings because four of us ate, one of us had seconds and then there was enough for leftover the next day. So I'm going to call the shipwreck casserole six servings. The chicken pot pie, mm, delicious. If you've not tried that recipe, you have got to try that recipe. Um, that made four servings. So that gives us 10 meals so far this week. Then the lasagna skillet, that was really good. That meal again, I would say would be four to six servings, depending on how much your family eats. For us, it gave us five servings. Um, we all ate once and one person finished it off. I also still had half of that container of cottage cheese left that I ate for breakfast for a couple of mornings the next couple of days. So I did have that left over. So the lasagna skillet was so delicious, an easy way to make lasagna and I thought it was delicious. So that gave us five more servings. So that's up to 15 servings for my family. The tomato pie is a delicious way to use garden veggies like your tomatoes if you need to use those up and it's a great vegetarian option. That was delicious and it gave us four servings. That brings us up to 19 meals for the week. And then the last meal, the beef stroganoff is on the side, easily stretched to six servings. All four of us ate, one person had seconds, and there was enough for leftovers for lunch the next day. So that brings us to 25 meals for $30. And they were all delicious. That is pretty good with today's prices. We had protein in four of the five meals, we had carbs, we had veggies, and I don't feel like we really missed out on anything. And the taste was wonderful. If you like this type of content, give me a thumbs up. Please press that notification bell so that you don't miss all my videos like this. And subscribe if you've not already thought about it. I'm so glad to have you in my kitchen and I'll see you next time. Bye.